Um, after the staff part, you come to the subsistence. And to the, again, here you can see anymore, but estima, estimated travel and subsistence costs for LLP country partners. So you have a column saying the purpose of the journey. That's the first column uh, on, under column B. You have then, uh, well, in this case, you have a, a, a gray column on the first row because these trips to Belgium, to Brussels, are mandatory. So, well, if you first here, you, you select the partner who, who will, uh, let's say it's P1. Let's say it's because of the uh, management. And let's say you have the same person for the four trips, two per year. So the, 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 you, you just fill in again, again according to number of person, number of day. But it doesn't mean you cannot, you cannot do uh, otherwise. OK? So you'll get something like. Like this, well, you can, you have one person at all time, all four trips, who will say, who will stay one day, four days each time, and uh, the maximum uh, subsistence cost that uh, this person will be uh, considered to use will be 232 euros, and we estimated that um, the, the, the average price for the return journey after the trip is 350 euros. Okay? The last column, the column J, will give you uh, totals. So, the rules for this uh, tab sheet, which you will, you will see uh, also on the... Let me see if I go back to the... Um, Four points. Uh, you you you'll, you will uh, imagine that you have uh, four trips in the, during your project. You will start by putting uh, uh, all the trips of the par partner one, all the trips of the partner two, and so on. Okay. And you will uh, start by uh, partner one, and then partner two, etc. This is, well, this is. Uh, I, I do that. I think, I think it's a common way of doing things. Maybe you can start with partner f seven and go partner five. I don't know, but it sounds logic to start like this. Um, and you should actually uh, follow this simple um, organi organizing uh, uh, organized uh, rule. You fill in the purpose, purpose of the journey first. Okay, for example, uh, you, the kickoff meeting. You, you coming from uh, Italy to Portugal. When, when it's, it comes to your partnership, to your moment, you will write transnational meeting in Portugal first. You start there. Then you go fill the, the rest of the form. Um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm repeating, I know I'm redundant, but this is so crucial, so important. Obviously, you're filling this application form because all that is back there is already uh, understood. Okay? Uh, the costs are in table uh, guide, guide part 1, table uh, 5b, which is uh, page 46. This is the... Uh, no, I showed it uh, earlier. I showed it all, yeah. Pop-up message uh, that you see already also here will, will uh, appear if you're wrong, if you put something wrong. You, we will go back to the table, huh? don't worry. Um, when, you, when you miss something in this part of the application form, Excel application form, message will uh, 
um, appear at uh, colon H. It's written in the guide. Okay? You don't read. You will see it anyway if you're wrong. But uh, uh, Brussels mandatory uh, meetings. Uh, yeah, the the print. You 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 notice that um, at some point. You see that there are. Well, yeah, there, there are a bunch of columns of of rows. So if you want to print, which I don't recommend, don't print. You don't need to print. Trees. Well, select the the, the you know there is a tool on the on the Excel file to to select the printing area because then you will have all the pages printed. Okay, this is a, a tip that you will find also on the um, on the, the the technical guides. Okay. Yeah, um, within this program, Grunvig Multilateral Project, you must, it's a, it's a rule, you must go to Brussels uh, twice a year to report. There is a bunch of reports that they asked you to bring uh, for them to follow what's going on, spending of the, I mean, everything. So this is not uh, this is inevitable. You have to go there twice a year, and since you're working on a two years project, you will have to go four times. Uh, generally, it's the uh, the project manager that uh, go there because in between the trips, anyway, uh, you will send documentation. They will access uh, the table. They will talk to your accountant manager. It's a report meeting, yes. Actually, it's written. It, it's, sorry, because you can't read it. That's your, your right to mention it. It's part of... No. You can change. You can have... A, well, it's all about logics, you know. If you have four different person during t two years. But uh, you, can have, um, you can have two person at each trip. I mean, it's... I have something, I think um, one person four day, two person eight days possible, but uh, you can have uh, three people each time, you just apply. It will, it will impact in your budget. You will have less money for other things. I, I, I never, I never uh, applied in Grunvig Multilateral Project yet. I would never go to Brussels without my accountant. I'm not an expert in numbers. How can I defend? It's about everything. I, I, we will, uh, I didn't uh, spend too much time on the details, for example, for example, in this case, okay, open a window, a slide, and let's talk about the report in Brussels. But be sure that uh, you will look at the information, and be sure that uh, they will, uh, I, I'm sure that they ask about anything. Probably they will, they will ask uh, for things that don't match really what's expected to, to, to appear at that point. They will focus on that. If they understand all the rest, they, they have no reason to ask you again. I mean, if it's green, 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 red, green, green, what about the red here? Hey, you did uh, things you didn't foresee. It's not eligible. The contract grant, you linked, they, they really, uh, okay? So I guess they will have to, you will have to bring all the information that you, you can uh, imagine that I can ask. I don't have experience, so I can't tell, but um, as I say, prepare for the best, plan for the worst. You're re always ready. In project management, you're always ready for anything. Anything. You always have a parachute, two parachutes, three if necessary. But you're ready, and also you're true, honest, and you say straightforward. Did you do that? No, I didn't. Why? Well, it's my, okay, I have to assume. This is my responsibility. I didn't do it. What's the problem? Uh, no escape. What's the problem? We are talking about things that are, we're building projects to, to create a greater uh, Europe. Okay? 
I don't know if you have something to add. I'm looking at you sometimes to call you <laughs> because uh, I guess uh, you need, uh, you know, she's, um, uh, uh, you need to uh, work with uh, uh, Aza and has, it's someone uh, expert in the field of uh, management and like, uh, numbers and all that stuff. I don't know if maybe you, and have experience also on bigger scales project, maybe you would like to... I was saying this is what it should be, but it's not always like that. Because when you first see numbers and persons and stuff, uh, and then I have to do with uh, with research. And in research, you cannot foresee everything because uh, during the job you may have, uh, for example, I, we applied for Eurostars with a project that is called Orchestra. I will not uh, explain what does it mean because it's a long, uh, long thing, but with a certain technology. So we should do something with a certain technology that is called envelope tracking. And uh, I was not in, uh, in the office because I have my baby and uh, my colleague that is the project manager that is an engineer called me and uh, asked me to, uh, to go in the office uh, to have a uh, Skype conference with our partners in France. And uh, when I go at uh, my office, when I went at my office, I understood that they have completely changed the technology. That is the name of the project, the technology. Envelope tracking, it doesn't exist anymore. We have Dorothy because when I applied September 2011, uh, this was the best technology. Nowadays, it's not anymore, but uh, it passed a year from the project to the, to yeah. the financial, while the France partner have already had their financial provisions, but while the Italian agency, they don't... Not ready. Not ready, not the contract. We have no contract. Even it, the contract? Yeah, the, and the project started in, Ju in uh, June. So we yeah. are now in December. So um, you were not here, but what, what, what uh, Yonida is uh, talking uh, about is exactly this foreseen, expected, anticipated, and, and um, what happened realistically. That's why you have, for example, uh, days before I mentioned amendments on contract levels, and also you must remember the change plan that I mentioned. That's project management. You foresee, you foresee number two, you foresee number three eventually, but at some point you can foresee. Remember the crystal ball? Impossible. Be sure that something will happen that you'll have to use your change plan. So, well, it depends on the level, uh, the, 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 the technical level of the project. Uh, for example, on a mobility project, uh, we had to add uh, trips, we had to reduce, uh, to change destination trips, things like that. It's a small thing, it's easy, okay, Skype conference, okay, we can't go to Romania, we, we change uh, Romania for France, okay. Maybe it's not good for me to use, uh, thanks. But uh, obviously, and Yonida is perfectly right, you, you will have things things will happen, okay? You have, uh, I mean, uh, you, you, if when, when you're building, uh, I was involved at the, uh, the smallest scale, maybe, level of uh, the construction of uh, metro in, in Portugal, that's why I went to Portugal, the metro of Porto. Do you know the metro of Porto? Someone? The yellow? You enter in the metro of Porto, yellow? No? Okay, you, you go in the metro, and all, all that you see inside the cabin is composite materials. And I was in a team of 27, 30 engineers, and I was responsible for what we call the interfaces, meaning the, between, between the parts and the, the metal aluminum structure, the screws, the, all the, just that. I was responsible for that. And I have more than, uh, I don't know, millions of articles to to manage with the software. So according to the level, sometimes for just one, one bit of a part, things are stopped. 
So be prepared to, to, be, to react. She had to leave her baby to solve the situation. This kind of things is obviously, I don't, I don't know. Uh, well, uh, this guy that jumped, I don't remember his name from the, I don't know how many kilometers in a parachute, you know, Baumeister or something. Can you imagine the planning of this project? You remember? No? The Red Bull context? A guy decided to go on a balloon at uh, I don't know how many kilometers on the, um, out of the atmosphere and jumped. And he, uh, he, uh, he uh, how do you say that? He managed a record of uh, Mach 1 point something. <laughs> Imagine the planning of this project. I, I was looking at it. And it was like a launching a rocket, um, you know? And the guys that, uh, with the, uh, okay, checked, checked, I mean, it was fantastic. It went well, he, he, he managed everything. Fantastic thing. Okay, back to the reality. Do you have um, some question here, this uh, part? It's 12 already, so. No? We will have an activity on that, small one, tomorrow. <clears throat> I mean, if you, if you agree, if you want. Because remember, tomorrow, Friday, is the day that I would like to, I have my plan. I can do my plan the way I, I prepare it, I foreseen it. But I have a plan, a change plan. And this change plan is why not do things that fit exactly what the doubts and things that you didn't understand. It's better. So we will decide. So you will decide today with me what to do tomorrow. Okay? Um, oh yeah, uh, just uh, one thing here. This, this column he, uh, column I, average, average price return journey, this doesn't obey to, to, um, to sellings. This obey to you asking your travel agency for a best price of, of the, 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 the trip. You, Pia mentioned it, she wanted to precise rightly the subsistence cost uh, is not the plane ticket, train ticket. Uh, don't use uh, you, bus tickets, okay. Don't use cars. They don't understand cars. They ask you, uh, I don't know if you have experience with uh, renting cars. I said to, it was a small scale project. I said, okay, all right, forget about it. It's okay. It was fun anyway. I did all the costs in uh, Spain, went to Barcelona. I use things that they can check. Um, so you see, for example, um, partner meeting in uh, Spain, so country of destination Spain, can you follow me? No, not really. Can, can you see? Okay. Um, First, you know, it's logic. First column first, second column, etc. Okay, a partner meeting in Alicante, in Spain. A country of de destination. The fact that you choose Spain will impact on the subsistence cost you put. Because if you're too high, pop-up message. You're asking too much. Then you have the, par uh, sorry, the partner. P1, P2, P, yeah, I think it goes to 99 partners, 200 partners. Okay, so you choose the partners. You write the work package that is uh, linked to this journey. Then you have two person going to this uh, meeting from this partner for this work package. And uh, these two person will stay at this place four days. The maximum selling cost is two, sorry, it's 227. And 
for these two persons, the total cost of the, the trip will, will fit 500 plus less. And on and on and on and on for every partner, for every meeting. You will, I don't want to insist too much on that, but um, you will notice that on the column E, in this project, only work package one, management, and work package six, dissemination, are uh, in this tab. So we considered that subsistence and travel cost in this project would address only these two work packages, but depend on your project. Now it's a moment where everything is possible according to what you want, you're going to do in your project. Equipment. No equipment in this project, but let's have a look of what they mean by um, equipment. Is it here? I don't remember. No. Okay. Always uh, because uh, we don't have uh, too much time and because I think maybe it's better to understand the alphabet better than to write a poem, let's go to the key points. Things that you can't miss. And, and probably not everything is there. It's not an exhaustive. You have to go through the financial regulation and all that stuff. Okay, what do they mean by equipment? You have first something you should know that at some point you have what they call procurement rules which are part uh, it's these small uh, things on the contract you know article this of uh, document that again I mentioned the accountant I work with well until now I never applied on a big scale project but I, I can't work without a lawyer without someone who knows. And lawyers, they don't like accountant and vice versa. And also lawyers, they, they have their own interpretation of law. Good luck, but work with them. Cross-check, okay? On my, on my net, structured networking, I have uh, on my LinkedIn account, I have this, not these work packages, but these packages have lawyers, uh, researchers, uh, accountants, and when I need an information, I kindly ask to one of my contacts if they would uh, be able or available to provide the information I'm looking at, and I compare with solutions. So uh, this year, for example, I'm, I'm applying on uh, two Grundvig multilateral projects, and I already created this, uh, this uh, summer a uh, network of five, six people. And I'm in contact with them um, all week. And some of them helped me to build this uh, event on aspects that I thought it was critical and I wanted to cross-check with them. Do you think I'm right to insist on that? Yes, insist on that. Okay. Um, so you have this procurement uh, rules uh, grant agreement. Let's see, sometimes I, I use... No. I would like to find this... I would like to show you. Oh, it's, it's maybe faster here. I don't know how many documents you are, uh, that are in my list that it's uh, accessible for you. I don't know how you, Synergia is going to uh, organize the access of this information, but that's what I'm talking about. Four hundred twelve pages. Poor yeah, poor accountants. Obviously, and this is just one. This is just one document. You don't want to spend your time. You, you are a project manager or you are a teacher or trainer. Or you have your accountant uh, spend some time on it. And it doesn't work like that. No? Yeah, I'm the accountant, I'm the project manager. <laughs> oh, well. 
And believe me, it's a bit the same in a lot of uh, places, but, uh, well, uh, it's all about, um, which means that Yonida is capable uh, and probably uh, with efficiency. But uh, it's always risky to, to skip skills. It's a, it's, a, it's a question of your organization, how you... you, you um... So, uh, you have this uh, documentation. You have a website. I, I as a tip, I always uh, um, print a PDF of the website I use. Because at some point, there is so many websites with so many specific information, you're easy, um, it's kind of a... So, you have um, uh, rules of applications, implementing rules, blah, blah, blah. So you have a website with all the, if, if in the contract you see some, something that is a specific uh, document that is linked to, you have the website to, to look for it or your colleague to do it. Um, you know, uh, I didn't even mention that. Accounting, cash and bank management, uh, record keeping, I did the modification of the grant agreement. We've been uh, talking about that. No profit, we're talking about that. Payroll and time management, payroll sheets, real, we mentioned, etc. Well, I don't think so. I think it's uh, global. I think I didn't check on the Leonardo and uh, on, uh, on the LLP, but at least it's, it, uh, it, uh, it showed up on LLP uh, program. I guess it's uh, LLP because, uh, for example, Europaid is quite different. I don't know Eurostar. By the way, lots of, uh, that's very pertinent. Uh, I'm so happy you're here to, today. I used, there are some things that I use as key points that are not under this program, under this framework. But I think it's useful, just for you to know. Um, yes, uh, it's enough on the financial. On the equipment. What to say? Okay, quickly, uh, you have these procurement uh, rules. No PCs. In, in this particular uh, aspect, I, I found two situations. You, you will you'll have this also. These are the, um, the uh, EACEA um, documentation you can find on the websites. And you have also, they did a bit what I've been doing for you today on the equipment and you see um, you see things uh, that are in my opinion are not uh, exactly the same way of looking at it on other documentation so again if you have a doubt and a very strong doubt on a very important thing don't hesitate to send an email to clarify as I mentioned on the info day when I was uh, looking at the uh, event by, uh, on the streaming, something happened in, in the middle of, uh, even the guy who is the head of the ag agency at this point was not sure, but said, no, no, uh, the bank guarantee, if, you, if your agency needs it, is supported, the costs of the bank guarantee are supported by the project. And the guy was saying, hey, my agency said no. So he had his uh, colleague, to check on the regulation, our article 14.1, that yes, and it's in the document. But this is not the reason why um, I found something different. I, I find some difference sometimes. So again, you, you don't, even if you have this, you, you check, you, you look at it, okay? Even if you know that it comes from the ESEA, we are not machines. We fail. That's our humanity. 
So on, P on, on PCs, laptops, laptops and tablets, these are not, uh, these are considered equipment, but uh, on the specific aspect on how you, you use them, you already have them, you put them on indirect cost. Okay, your project starts and you're already using your laptops, you can be eligible, it's eligible on indirect cost. And, but if you have for some reason to buy a superior com computer, because you're going to do some specific research and you need, uh, I don't know, 5 tera for RAM, uh, it's eligible, but it must be on the, um, on the eligible duration of the project. If it's before, no retroactivity. Uh, re retro... I'm not sure about my... That's why I have to learn uh, Italian very fast. Um, the maximum uh, equipment uh, budget you can consider in, in, the, in the project is 10% of the total budget. Not on the grant, on the total budget of the project. You always uh, working on the total budget of project. You're not calculating your things on the money you're, you're receiving. Uh, when you have similar items, two different computers or two different equipment, you, make an, uh, you use an average the same way you have the staff situation. Um, <clears throat> Usage, u usage rate, you will see on the tab that you have to put uh, the user usage rate is the uh, quantity of time you're going to use the equipment. That's the meaning of the, of the word, of the sentence. Depreciation accountancy, okay? There is a, a rule, I remember, you use the computer or the equipment only uh, half the time during the project, then you'll have a depreciation of 50%. Okay, just for you to have an idea. You, but I found in another document that the you use a, uh, an equipment from the beginning to the, the end, so you will have a depreciation of 100%, right? No. But this is accountancy. So you, you have to, um, to, uh, to check. Uh, renting is okay. You can rent things, perfectly eligible. Okay, this is equipment. Also, you rent during the eligible duration of the project, and it needs stop at the end of the project. Don't buy cars, by the way. And you can rent car. It's so it's okay. It's a confusion. They don't understand cars. I don't know why, but uh, uh, believe me, there's some. Yeah. Do, do you have a, do you know why there is a situation with the car? Do you, if, if no, I don't know because uh, I, th I think it was a problem with traveling costs because my, my partner, uh, I did the, this project with him and uh, this guy went to Romania for some time. Romania? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know very well That's Romania. where I had my problem too. <laughs> And uh, it didn't pass the, the cost of, the, um, of taxi or with a car, only plane and, uh, bus, and train. bus and train. Train in Romania, it was not possible for him, so he had to, to rent a car. And, uh, but uh, we missed that part of the cost. So, I know so you had well. to support the cost? Yeah. Okay. Well, when in, in, in accountancy, you don't consider fuel. You consider a, an amount of euro for per kilometers. Because sure. the cost of fuel is different from country, country to country. In that meaning, I... Uh, but believe me, at the... Oh. Someone is in... I remember, I, was so, I like to travel by car. Come on, lots of things but happen it just, by car. Uh, but if I forgot about it after that. It could happen once uh, you can go by public transport. So in Bulgaria, it's uh, fun to... to travel by car. I lost myself so many times in Bulgaria. I found, I found myself in places. It's a fantastic experience, but forget it. It's, they, they didn't support it, so I traveled by bus. Oh, well, I, uh... Romania is another case. Sometimes a country you go, you have problem uh, Ro Romania is, uh, I don't know about Romania, there is a something, but each time I have a Romanian for the last three years, 
there was something with the Romanian, uh, but not because of Romanian, because of the rules there. For example, on the invoice, they had to have the signature of the manager of the, the place, the signature of the staff of the place, and a stamp. Because if not, they couldn't have the refund. So country to country, it's a big deal. Sorry? I can't understand uh, uh, what's the meaning for senior items. Uh, oh, yeah. If you have, for example, um, uh, you need two, two equipment, two different equipments. Equipment A, equipment B. But they are the same kind of equipment. Either there are two computers, two register machines, I don't know, whatever it is. The but they have two different prices. One costs 10 euros, the other costs 5 euros then you will have a total cost for these equipments of seven and a half euro. You, you make an average, average, 10 plus five divided by two, 7.5, and that's how, how far I can go on mathematics. These are some rules. Uh, laws are not uh, perfect, but that's the way you do it. And it's get, it's get really complicated when you go to larger scales and research uh, equipments and all that stuff. So this is a rule. This is not me talking, this is... Um, um, oh, you bet, yeah. I think it's possible. It's always a question of justifying and finding the bills and all that stuff. Uh, buying second-hand equipment, I don't have experience. But my logic is, if I buy a second-hand equipment, computer, within my project, I'm cost-effective. It's different? I think it's uh, written some, somewhere. Because it has to do with Yeah. I'm not sure about that, but um, I think it's possible. I have this information, for example, here on the depreciation, depreciation rate that um, the beneficiary, beneficiary and the uh, national tax rules are applicable. So this is your, when you buy a, an equipment or something in, in Italy, the depreciation uh, rule is the Italian system. When you rent or when you lease, there is no depreciation considered. And you, you have the full cost of the, of the equipment. These are the little details that I have some uh, difficulty to go deep because first it depends on the country. It depends. We've been talking about, for example, the, the difficulties, uh, the obstacles to find uh, in, to, to get invoices in some 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 point. So, but again, key point: travel by bus, by train, by plane, when it's possible. When you go to uh, some places in Turkey, sometimes it's complicated. Also, in Portugal, it's very easy to go any place uh, by train and bus, but... Um... Um, so, here, it's empty, but you will just describe, I think you have a maximum of 50 characters, yes? Okay, the justification, again, a, B, C, D, don't start with F and back. You mentioned the partner here by an option that you, you have here. You mentioned the work package again. Uh, you mentioned the number of uh, item. For example, uh, um, two computers or two equipments. The unit costs, B. The, what I mentioned on my, my slide, the usage, usage uh, rate is a question of a percentage. 50% of the time of the duration of the project, I will use this equipment, 20% of the time. And you don't use percents, you just put the number, 20, 30. If you buy on the day two of your project an equipment that will, you will use until the day, uh, the last month, uh, the day before the last month of the project, then you have here 100%. Okay? 
And at this, this column here, calculate well, the uh, final result of what you have been uh, selecting on the uh, equipment part. This uh, subcontracting sub part of the budget table is uh, case sensitive also. Be sure about what you're doing here. Uh, let, let, let me follow exactly. Okay, first of all, um, the limitation, the, the maximum you can, oh, okay, first the uh, rules. Okay, on, again, you, you should check about the uh, uh, procurement rules. What is subcontracting? It's defined. It's something that, that means exactly this thing and not another thing, just like staff, for example, okay? If I'm not part of a, a staff or synergia, I'm not eligible as a staff for synergia because I'm not a worker. So legal, etc. Same thing here. So your rules, I mean, uh, I, I mean all the documentation, uh, documentation I've been referring here. Okay, procurement rules, the guides, all there. Uh, you will find all, all that information there. So it means that when you open this tab, okay, I have to check exactly what I'm doing here and what we are talking about here. Um, the 30% rule is the maximum uh, budget that you can uh, consider for the subcontracting. Uh, for some reason, imagine that uh, I need to translate all the documentation of my uh, project in uh, Bulgarian, a subcontract translation. It doesn't, it's a very bad example because this is no euro di dimension, but uh, you will subcontract something that you don't have, that you can't do within your partnership. So it means that when you build your partnership, you will obviously look at partners that can, that can bring everything you need. This is, this is not a trap, but you have to think logical, you have to be real. You will create a partnership basically to address and to manage to bring everything you need. But there are sometimes things that you need to subcontract for some reasons, depending on the project. Okay? I don't want to use your experience too much, but maybe you have a specific also bad experience on subcontracting you will, if you want to intervene at any time. She's kind of my assistant here. I feel so comfortable now. My shoulders are bigger. <laughs> um, you have um, another part, which is uh, missing data. If you do something wrong on column G, you will find a message error that would tell you that something is wrong. So you, you, you are help, helped on the construction of the, the tab. Um, you have invoice when you have a cost. You have a contract when you subcontract. And also, I think I mentioned it. There, is, there are uh, rules on procurement according to the amount of subcontracting. I don't know if I have it. Yeah. Oh, I have it uh, uh, here after that. If you subcontract less than 1,205. Okay. Less than that, you must uh, have a minimum of uh, justification, which is the invoice. You subcontract translation for 8,000 euros, you will have a contract defining exactly what you've been asking to the pe person or organization who will subcontract. And then you will have an invoice for this person or this uh, organization. If you go to um, uh, twelve, 
25. You will need three tenderers, meaning you will have to ask for three proposals. Actually, you ask for maybe five, and you choose the three, three best one. But you must prove that you, will, you, you had had uh, three tenderers to decide which one uh, to, 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 to give the rationale, the justification, why you choose this one and not the other one. This is also to check your seriousness. You, know, it's, you might subcontract uh, your friend or you might subcontract uh, a company where you're also a shareholder. You're not allowed to. If you go uh, between 25,000 and 60, 60, 60,000, euros, you need five tenderers. And if you subcontract something that, that is uh, a cost that is above 60,000 euro, then it's your national applicable, uh, applicable rules of public tenders that are applicable. Okay? These are golden rules. Don't fail there. And also, uh, be careful about what you're subcontracting. Again, rational. It doesn't make sense you uh, subcontract a, a trainer for a learning method. If your project is a learning method to tackle the people with the Down syndrome, you will find partners in your partnership that are skilled and expert in this field. You can maybe a subcontract for some reason an expert because of a conference but that's a maximum you will not subcontract a work package <laughs> what you you have a partner to do the work package um, what time is it Sorry? I think it's uh, possible to, you can subcontract. I subcontracted the printing of leaflets, printing of, or, or but uh, you have a work package on dissemination. You have a, a web designer, I don't remember her name, but uh, uh, Questa Donna? at the back. She's a web marketeer. You have a partner to deal with the dissemination work package. I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not, it's not, sure, I'm not, uh, I don't want to tell you that you cannot, but I wouldn't for sure. I think it's not, you have a work package and even this work package is part of the tab. You know, you, when you select the, the work packages, the activities with the timetable, The whole package. Yeah. It can make sense if it's rational against the golden rule. It makes sense. It's a cost then. It might be an indirect cost. Grazie. Subcontracting, for example, you imagine that you need. Um, you, in your dissemination package, you have a valorization day, a day where you will invite um, people to, to engage them on what you've been doing. You might need to rent 
uh, uh, room. If I'm not wrong, you can put that at subcontracting. It's subcontracting, sub it's renting a, a, a place. So, uh, again, you will see that um, on the, um, on the uh, guides that you are available, you have to, to use, um, you, you can find the, the, the answer. But if you have a doubt, you can use the help desk. So it's perfectly possible to use this subcontracting, but this subcontracting, I really warn you, I have no experience, and I already know we, before applying that it's very sensitive. Okay? Uh, as I said, you will subcontract a competence that you can't find on the consortium, which means that you were clever enough to build a consortium who would 95% uh, address and be capable of skills and competences <coughs> You see the logic at the part C1, part C2, skills and competence of staff and all that stuff? All this makes sense. All this will be checked by the evaluators and all this will, will be uh, used uh, to um, uh, critically uh, analyze your project. You, you wanted to say something? Don't worry, it's okay, we are here for that. We were talking about the subcontracting situation. So, the, for example, uh, we are in Italy, we got uh, two, three partners, and uh, it's time uh, of dissemination. So we have to disseminate, our partner will disseminate the outcomes of the project. To do, do, to do this, he'll, uh, he uh, will use another subject to create the, um, the website, the campaign in a way. So my partner who uh, cared the dissemination has to pay uh, the agency to create the events or the, only the website, you know, is it clear? Lo dico in italiano, lo devo ripetere, non lo so. per i progetti europei, loro non hanno l'idea che sia di solito qua quando si fanno i progetti regionali, cioè nella dissemination tu puoi mettere questa cosa perché tanto tu li paghi la fattura non è sap... Tu, nella, in ogni work package, il partner leader del work package può uh, dare in subcontratto qualcosa. Allora c'è il partner che è il leader della dissemination e nella, nel piano di disseminazione tu vuoi per esempio uh, fare una campagna a fissioni in dieci città europee e ti rivolgi ad un'agenzia eh, di advertising che crei la campagna, i layout dei manifesti, cose di questo tipo. Come fai a spesare, a, a, a rendicontare il costo dell'agenzia se non hai inserito nella, tua, eh, pre, nella preparazione del progetto, in quel work package che darai in subcontratto la creazione, quella parte, cioè la creazione della campagna di advertising? No, eh, perché, cioè, non ho capito perché non lo dovremmo inserire, <ride> nel senso che mi, eh, le, le risposte che avevamo capito prima è che no, in genere sono costi che eh, ti, ti spesi da solo, ma se non hai messo il, sub, il subcontratto come fai? <ride> come parte questa parte dal punto di vista della rendicontazione per il fatto che... Sì, se è piccola sì, però uh, io dicevo, nella... quando fai la dissemination, che tu dicevi ma io non, non, non lo faccio io direttamente, eh sì, ma non significa, eh, infatti la... tu paghi loro, loro ti danno fattura e tu porterai la loro, no, va nella dissemination, non va nel, sub... nel subcontratto, non fanno più eventi, No. No, no. 
Allora, adesso non ho presente quali sono in, in questo preciso programma come sono divise, però sicuramente nella, nella, nel work package dissemination ci sarà una voce che è legata proprio al... No, allora è più... Mm, no. No, se c'è il software sì, ma se non c'è il software per farlo no. Io ti ho detto di questo non ho, non ho fatto, quindi non so di preciso dove va, però... Eh, quello è sicuro, quello è sicuro. Però in genere nel subcontracting loro pensano eventi molto più complicati, nel senso che sì, tu dai un evento, però cioè, noi per esempio nella dissemination che abbiamo fatto per un progetto nel DG Agriculture, cioè loro si sono occupati da uh, affittare la sala, mettere le sedie, i computer, preparare il, il pranzo per le persone, quindi il coffee break durante, uh, fare il lift lift per dare alla fine, quindi di tutta la campagna. Allora in quel caso, con quel budget di 30.000-40.000 euro, se la sono visti loro era subcontracting, però se era una cosa più piccola, cioè pagarli veramente i due fogli oppure la, la, la stampa di qualche cosa, allora entravano... Dove metterlo come voce? E lì dobbiamo vedere bene, che andare a vedere nelle regole che cosa sta scritto, perché sicuramente c'è la possibilità, anche nel management certe volte vanno, eh? cioè molto spesso... That's an uh, indirect cost, that's a 7%. You have, you, have uh, you, you, you so uh, fast and clever, you already at the table all the costs. You will see that. There are costs. If you can't fit the rule, the, um, una, una, a chair, how do you say that? Sedia. Sedia. Sedia, eh. Ah, va bene. Sedia in the back. Um, You will, you will, well, you follow the rule of the subcontracting. And you have a cost that doesn't fit the subcontracting. Or doesn't fit the equipment, doesn't fit the staff, doesn't fit anything. You have a tab called other costs. And in this tab of other costs, there are eligible costs. And there are costs that are not eligible. So you will have always a place to put a cost. And you, are, you will have also, um, because of the cost, you will use the description of the cost, but you, are, you have also something very important, that is the, um, on the G3, you have the explanation of budget expenditures. And there, you can eventually uh, pinpoint, underline, the specific situation that you had uh, to, to put on other costs that are very important for the project. Example, examples, uh, well, on the, the partner one, on work package three, which was the pilot testing of the me learning method, needed uh, to subcontract the training assistance in testing phasing, maybe because it's a, it was a specialist in psychology. But for sure, his skills and competences were very important for the project. He was not a staff of the partner one, or any partner. He was not an employee uh, which had uh, a company. I'm an employer, I'm an employee, and I have my own company. And the partner where I work with subcontract me. Huh. Ma, no. This is not eligible. Um, I am, I am, Part owner of uh, my company, which is a partner two, and I have another company which I'm partner, which not uh, I am shareholder. I own part of the company, and I'm not a partner. And my company as partner in the project subcontract my company. 
It's the same thing. This is not applicable. This is not eligible. So all these rules, um, translation uh, of product in, in Hungarian, in Polish, in Portuguese, in Romanian, blah, 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 because we intended to make available our results in the language of the partners involved. A project might, might make sense to translate in uh, Albanian, in whatever. I mean, it's a subcontracting, uh, for sure. If, you don't, if Albania is not eligible for LP, no, I don't think so. Um, but for some reason, uh, you in your mapping in somewhere, or because you want to work under the umbrella of the Council of Europe, which are 47, this is not a European uh, body, it's a European organization, and you want to be, uh, have a great impact because the, the topic you're using is sensitive for all these countries, you might subcontract different translators in all these countries. For example, this is only examples. I think it's okay to use examples, but it's not okay because don't take it for granted. It depends on your project. And again, even with uh, uh, my small experience and the greater experience, there are still some, sometimes some doubts. It's normal. Uh, printing of book, external evaluation, um, expert articles for the book to integrate to the book. For example, uh, I don't know. I would like to have uh, Umberto Eco saying something on the project. I, I will. It's an expert. This is an example. So um, according according see the logic here. According to the task description, you will have the partner identification, uh, which are uh, options that you can choose, again, according to the, the, the table. And you will have also uh, the work package to link. At all time, you have the cost partner work package link. And be sure that at all time, you don't copy paste manually. Believe me, it's, it's a good thing to, it's a lot of work, but, um, it's avoid, uh, avoid surprises. Okay, and at the end, you have the total cost calculated for you. What else, what else to subcontracting? I have uh, another things here. Okay, I mentioned no, ba no basic work package can be subcontracted. And certainly not management or things like that. No employee of the consortium. I mean, I said the other day at lunchtime that I have uh, 29 uncles, and so imagine the, the quantity of primos. I might uh, subcontract someone f that have a company on my, on my, I mean, in my family, but um, come on, you, you have to be sound and reason reasonable. I, I prefer to subcontract uh, uh, partners that I know, obviously, this is okay. I might subcontract uh, ASA for uh, some specific reason I intend that it's, as I have, a, I will ask as a tender and all that stuff, you know, but be reasonable. Um, no organization with the same shareholder. Shareholder mean owner of part of the companies. And uh, you have a character limits of uh, 85, um, 85 characters limit to fill in the description, description of the task you're subcontracting. Something else, something else. Um, Yeah, uh, I would like to mention that there is in the rules of procurement an article that they, they insist uh, quite a bit to be aware of and to take stock, which is the article number two Roman, uh, Roman numbers, uh, 2.2. .2. Article 2.2 .2, on conflict of interest. 
conflict of interest, things you're doing that are conflictual, that are not, not good. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you do something not because you're mean and you're very smart, just because you, you think it's okay for you, it doesn't mean anything and actually you're wrong. It's not, okay? And uh, uh, for subcontracting, if, if you are an LLP country and you're subcontracting uh, a company, you can't subcontract a company on the third country's uh, definition of uh, uh, typology of, of company. So you can't subcontract a company in Togo or in Sierra Leone or in uh, the islands Kiribati or in the Maldives or Seychelles. I have to say that uh, you were a uh, great help and grazie mille for that. So, uh, grazie mille a tutti. Now we have the lunch break. Oh, thanks. Oh yeah, your baby. Pa paride. Paride. Do you want to? Uh, um, yeah. Wait for. I can start. Okay. No, it's because if I start, nothing. No, no one's looking at me. So I don't know. It's okay. All right. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. Just to finish this um, this part of the Excel table, um, you have um, a table which is the uh, called other costs. And as an um, example of other costs, um, we have uh, the, the, the room rent that I mentioned. That in our project, we, we um, we organize the final conference, which are the speakers invited, the video streaming, such as this kind of the, the room, the refreshment that uh, Yonida mentioned, the coffee breaks and all that stuff. So we've been through, 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 uh, through these costs. Uh, other expert materials, refreshments. Uh, the renting of a web, web platform, which is called Moodle, and I I don't like very much. Sorry if I'm no offense, but it's um, a widely used platform. Okay. So let's let's uh, let's we've been you've been talking a lot about this cost, but um, I would like to mention maybe uh, examples of other costs, which are bank charges. For example, the bank charges of a bank guarantee, travel and subsistence costs of third parties, other associate part of the partner which are going to help you but are not a partner of the project, um, 
production, translation, publishing costs when performed by co-beneficiary of organizations. Imagine that you have a, a, a company which, are, which is not included in your uh, project, but they will contribute somehow. You can put these costs under the table other costs. What else? Yeah, the, I remember uh, remembering you that the total other cost, the, the, the maximum uh, percentage uh, of other cost is 7% of the total budget of the project. 7%. Remember 10% for the equipment, 30% for the uh, subcontracting uh, field, and 7% for other cost. We will, I'll show you a kind of a summary of... Um, Indirect. Well, uh, I have ex examples of, uh, I'm not sure that you have, for example, indirect costs are all costs related uh, to administration, such as computer and all that stuff. Communications costs, as uh, phone calls, uh, internet, photocopies, consumables, uh, office supplies, you know. Uh, if you buy uh, chocolate for the afternoon lunch, it's other costs. Infrastructure costs, rent, electricity of the premises you're using, these are other costs, indirect costs. Okay. Now. Um, <clears throat> At this point, the last table of this part is what you called estimated, estimated expenditure. This, this, this seven page which is uh, the tab, which is under the blue part of the application form, is uh, summarize what you've been uh, putting from two to six. So when, when you hear, again, you have information on, on what to, 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 to do. And here, they, you are asked to put the, some information. Now here, obviously, you will be careful to use the same acronym that you're using in, in the MS Word form. Yeah, okay? If you wrote, if you wrote go to Europe in the uh, Word document, you will put here go to Europe. It's the same thing. And here, the number of, of months that you have to choose. And here, Well, let's see. Uh, Grunvig multilateral project. Okay. Easy. Then, when you've you've been doing you you did that here. You will have. Maybe I can show you on the. Okay, here you will have, in this uh, explanation, you can see the distribution of what they call the direct costs, direct costs, which is the staff, the staff travel, equipment, subcontracting, other. So here, there, this column is a total operational cost, so it's the sum of all these costs. 
Um, the total indirect costs that are up to 7%. Okay, you have what, what I call uh, a, a big picture of, of what you've been doing. Okay? This, this is a big picture where you have all, all the things that you've been doing on the tabs before are concentrated here. Um, it's the total costs. Okay. Uh, when, when you were when in, you were in at each uh, in each line, uh, there, is, there are uh, indirect co indirect costs. Yeah. So, so it means each partner. No, the other. Each partner could, uh, could have uh, seven percent of uh, indirect costs, uh, mm, referring uh, it, its budget. It's correct. Yeah, the, the if, total uh, the partner... total sum the total sum of the indirect cost of the partners give six point ninety nine percent of the total budget. Okay. Uh, but uh, how can I? Okay. How can I? Uh, pa partner okay, one, no two, three, four, oh, okay. five. And the, the sum of that compared, the total sum of indirect costs of all the partners compared to the total budget gives you 6.99%. So I can so distribute, I, I could distribute these 7% uh, uh, how, how I want. Our what? <laughs> I, I distribute. Uh, I can you don't, you don't distribute. Each partner will tell you its budget for the work package, for the activity, for the this. And some costs he will tell you are to, put, to be put on travel, some costs on staff, no, and no. some, some costs on... In, in, yeah, in obviously. Others. But for the uh, indirect costs, if uh, a partner uh, has not uh, in, uh, indirect costs, uh, I can put uh, uh, the seven percent uh, in the other part uh, partners. Uh, if line. you have room, you can organize. Yeah. Okay. But obviously, you organize according to the the true uh, things that you are going to do. So you were actually uh, talking about this column here. Colon I. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. Um, then, then you have the colon L, which is here. Okay. You have, you, you're going to, according to the, the cost of the partners that you've uh, received, because of the, the work you've been doing with them, you know how much partners need. They ask you, uh, here, here the situation is, this table is already arranged, but uh, uh, maybe partner one, partner one, uh, uh, when, when, when we begin to fill in the Excel tab, ask it for 60, say, said that 60,000, and partner two was asking for uh, 45,000, and partner three was asking for uh, less than the number that is there. So when you fill in, you enter the indirect cost, cost of partner after partner, you will reach a total amount. If, for example, this partner wanted uh, 7,000, Euro. Mm. Niente. <laughs> no possibile. Impossibile. Okay? So you fill in the blanks and you have your. But also, you can eventually have the situation that. Uh, A partner said that uh, he will he need only um, I'm not helping huh? 10 euros and you see it's only 6.20% of the um, 
of the indirect cost, what do you do? You put money on others to get uh, closer to the seven, huh? Um, uh, real costs. No, 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 you can have uh, 50, don't worry. No, we have, no, real costs. Obviously, since you are foreseen a uh, budget, you can, obviously, this is perfectly normal, to think, well, uh, my indirect, indirect uh, costs are uh, lower than uh, as our 5% of the project. Does it make sense? Yes. Stop at there, right there. Did I forgot something? Should I think about something that makes sense? And then, yeah, maybe eventually you correct your budget and you go closer to 7%. For the cost, I think, uh, I'm not sure, but I think not. You don't. You don't. E quindi è una voce... You, no, you, no, non è per i costi indiretti. E quindi è una voce che in genere usano <laughs> al massimo perché... Uh, you don't. This is the 7% of trust they have with you. So they must not be justified by supporting document and they do not have to be detailed in the final report. How will uh, you don't use uh, all, all the 7%? <laughs> <All right. laughs> Why you could decide that, uh, to have um, indirect costs uh, uh, less than 7%? <laughs> if you we can debate about that <laughs> off the record, obviously. <laughs> but that's... Um, So, um, the financing costs, I can find uh, those uh, there in this table. I have to describe the, no. the way I use the need, co You don't need to worry about indirect costs, uh, reporting, proving, justifying. So, the, co the co-financing cost is the same than uh, that uh, indirect costs. No, it's different. The co-financing obeys to the total budget budget at 75%, considering 7% okay. maximum of indirect costs, yeah. unknown costs. Um, do you have uh, to specify the type of costs you, are, you have to co-finance? No. So well, the indirect costs could uh, be one of you the don't, voices you of don't, uh, you don't have any you don't have any ta tabs you have you have uh, the tab but, but you have the tab all the costs some types of, i think some types of uh, voice uh, of um, costs uh, uh, couldn't be co-financing in in um, in other uh, programs uh, for example uh, they don't permit uh, uh, a, a low yeah. uh, nature uh, uh, kind, uh, in kind. Nature, in kind. Yeah, that's, that's the rules that you have to check the rules and to, to see if it's eligible cost or not. <laughs> on, the, on the guide, on the first part of the guide, you have the description of eligible cost and all that stuff. And I, I, I think I have a, a slide on that. Okay, here then, after that, you have. Va bene. Va bene. Mi piace italiana discussione. <laughs> so at uh, column N you have a distribution of each partner 
contribution to the project, which uh, corris corresponds to the 25%. You see that here, 75, 74.95, 94, and here, this is the, the amount that you put that each partner has to contrib contribute to fulfill the 100% of the budget. Okay? Co financing? The, yeah, there is a part for co financing. We're going yes, there. Yes, but co financing percentuale. Uh, percent. Part. part <laughs> The, the, uh, <laughs> the part of co of co-financing is uh, one of the criteria for evaluation. If you decided to uh, no, well, because in Italy many programs, uh, if you decided to co-finance more than twenty five percent, you have um, more points. Well, the, uh, in that case, yeah, I don't have the information. It might be there, but uh, you're supposed to bring the twenty five percent. Okay. So. You see that the partner one and the partner two contribute with uh, higher numbers. The partner four, we in Portugal, we contributed with uh, 8,804 uh, euro, euros. Then you have the column O and the column P. Okay. You have the column. No, because we have to specify exactly in uh, what, uh, what kind of costs uh, you put your co financing. That's why we use the other So we, we, we try that, to, to, to say. Um, yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a good uh, breakdown. Down because uh, we. Uh, we don't know our co-financing. Uh, yeah, it's that's a good breakdown, but as I look at the Excel table, I find no place where to put, to specify. No, no, it's, it's but, clear. But if you think uh, 10,000... This is a centralized. This is a centralized. If you think 10,000 co-financing uh, budget uh, and you have uh, 2,600 of uh, indirect costs, uh, in real uh, you have to co-finance uh, um, less than uh, 8,000. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So... But you, you, you can notice that in this project, there's no other sources of co-financing. Okay. So since there is no co-financing, uh, the, the other part, of the 25 part of the project budget will come from the partners. But you know, uh, what can happen is, uh, for example, I'm a partner on project, and I don't have the 12,000, and I have a, a bank uh, a credit, a loan. But I don't put it on other source. I, I, on other sources of uh, co-financing, you describe the source with a maximum character, I don't, I don't know how much, you fill in the corresponding row partner, and if, or if, if, war, if more than one source of co-financing uh, is used, you have to indicate that information. You don't have room to put it here on the uh, budget expenditure explanation. Yeah, everything you, you, you put, okay? Imagine that uh, my, 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 the project I'm developing in Bulgaria on bees are supported by uh, ASA. I put ASA here. I have, they must know, uh, they must have the possibility to check what you are, uh, who you are working with. And if you don't have uh, room enough 
to, to put uh, all the uh, information here, you use the explanation of expenditure. Um, yeah, uh, just for you to know uh, on, this, uh, on this table, when, you, when something goes wrong and it's not well written, you have on D8, which is this, this cell, you will have an uh, error telling you that in D8, if, you're, if you uh, don't put the right information about equipment at that point, if you have a problem with, uh, with the, this column, when you fill the equipment and extra, if you extra, you will have an error here. Here we have, in this example project, we have zero because um, we don't use equipment. But if we, you put uh, an amount of equipment uh, above 10%, you will have on this cell uh, something saying you're, wrong, you're, you're, not, you're out of your budget. And if on the, um, on the table of uh, subcontracting, you did something wrong, you put too much money, then you will have here something, a, a message telling you that uh, you're out of your budget. Okay? Uh, up to um, 2500, you need uh, another procedure. So, uh, come, era, come si chiama quella procedura? Up the 2000 for the subcontract. E come si dice in inglese? For the sub. No, capito niente. <laughs> when we have a subcontracting higher than uh, the 2500, we need. Oh, uh, 12, quanti era? Eh no, I'm talking about the 12 and the 50, sorry, sorry. Oh, okay. Ah, capito un poco. Okay. <laughs> yeah, between two, uh, two okay. tw tw uh, 12,500. Uh, how can we um, put this information into this kind of uh, table? No. E eh vabbè, qua non gli marchi niente sul, sulla voce sul contratto. Uh, sì. Sì. You, you, put, you, put, you put all the cost of uh, subcontracting on the tab of subcontracting and it will show, show up there. No, no, no. If, if you must... Sub Before you apply, you, you, you want to subcontract this. You subcontract uh, 20,000, yes. Then, before filling the application, you have chosen who you are going to subcontract. You, you keep it with, the, with you, you put the amount, you put the name of the... and you have it with you. And then the project is uh, approved and you start working uh, with the project. At some point, they might ask you, look, this uh, company ABC, show me the tenders. And show me the contract of uh, procurement. Remember this golden. Yeah. You don't send. You have it with you. Remember this golden rule: all costs eligible must have been foreseen, meaning must have been uh, thought, uh, understood. This is a golden rule. Choose the subcontractor after the approval, the approval of the project. How can you do that? Because you don't know how you're oh, going to spend... Some, in, oh, because in some regional programs you can do it. Ah, okay. <laughs> it's ah. strange. 
Ma, ma claro but, che uh, sì. Ma con i fondi strutturali sono anche europei, ma con diversi fondi. In questo caso, quello che ti chiedono è di sapere tutti i costi che avrai. Sì, 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 because the project is not approved yet. But the number that you're going to put in this table is the number that your, your tender gave you. So if the project is approved, you officialize after signing the grant yeah, agreement. Yeah, yeah. It's clear because we have uh, also this type of programs, but we have also programs when we, your estimated costs is uh, only estimated with, yeah. without a real... You make a call and yeah. you receive an email. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, quanto è? Hey. Ah, due euro. Yeah, this is possible. Not here. Okay, this is basically the expenditure um, table, which gives you um, Okay, so at this point I would, like to, I would like to quickly mention the third countries thing, some key points. Uh, maybe I don't need that. On the, on the tabs, so you, you've, been, you've been working on your seven. You've been, your, your table seven is, is right, is okay. Now, you're going to the yellow, yellow part of the, uh, of the tabs. The yellow parts of the tabs are uh, a tab of staff, travel and subsistence, other, and expenditure, only for the third country, if you have one. The same rules than the others. But, there's always a but, the categories 1 to 4 have different selling, selling, uh, selling costs. You will see that on the, um, on the international uh, standard classification of occupation, which is available at the third country part of the financial provision of the guide 1. Okay? The user guide number 1. For example, um, the category A for a manager is 450 euros a day. Don't ask me why. The category 2 is uh, 300, B 250, and for 125. You, they, they have no right to, to equipment are not eligible for third countries. You can find here any tab for uh, equipment or subcontracting or other. So it's very limited. Travel and subsistence, very important. Well, for, for the third country to travel, they must have an authorization, an authorization from the agency. I don't know exactly, I don't know, I, I never did any project with a third country, but at some point, I guess at the moment of the, the um, uh, validation of the, con the, the, the project at the grant agreement moment at some point they will have to deal with the situation of uh, is it me? I didn't move so uh, about this uh, author authorization of uh, the travel but the, sub the subsistence costs uh, obey to a different document for the third countries, which is different than the guide part one, guide part two, A and B. And this document is called current per diem.
Hmm? Oh, I forgot to I forgot to put it here. Okay, I forgot to put, to put it on this. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like the squirrels. The squirrels in the springtime and summer, they hide nuts. And then on the winter with the snow, they don't, they don't remember where they put it. I think it's, it must be there maybe. I'm sorry about that, but it's a lot of documentation, and sometimes um, so I, I put it on a, another folder because this is not European. This um, this is a, a, a document called current per diem per day rates. So if you want to work with uh, Bolivia. You have uh, 143 euros if you want to go to if you want to work with the third country, which is uh, Albania, 228 and so on. Okay, this is the the, 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 the rates of subsistence, and then then you have all the rest stuff and all that stuff. Okay, and this is dated from July the fourth. Okay. So again, each time you're using an application part, uh, a part of the application form, be sure that you're using the right. Sometimes, believe me, uh, there are projects that are very good, but because they use the wrong table of information, um, okay, that's it. Any question at this time? No? You're very brave. Now, uh, uh, um, I, I'm, at this point, I decided to, to, to propose to you um, um, a presentation which, uh, which is a kind of, um, you already, uh, I guess you already know me a little bit. I think uh, I always try to, after going through the details and the information, I try to uh, create something that helps you to put the things together, more or less. I hope it's not too complicated. So here, this is supposed to be at 12. So we're doing it right now. Ciao, grazie. So here, my point is to, for you to try to connect the dots between the information that you've been filling in the application form of the Word document and the budget, okay? So interconnection means how it, it's linked. Interdependency means how one thing depends to the other. Two different concepts together. Yeah, we can discuss semantics, uh, but um, I propose this. Um, I propose this uh, approach. Approach. Sometimes things are interconnected, but they don't influence influence uh, uh, each other. Okay, I'm very well in interconnected with water, but also I'm independently uh, connected to water. The more water I drink, the, the healthier I get. Well, debate. That's a new debate. Okay, see the red line, the red line that connects things. Uh, understand the general uh, versus the narrow approach. Uh, match all documents with the aim. At any moment, you lift your finger to, to enter a data, or you take a pen, you must be 
coherent at any moment, okay? Any single task. And uh, um, learn to use the lifelong learning support document. So, you, so you're working, okay, your project is ready on the paper. Now you're taking your things from your paper to the, to the application forms. You're very close to the, to the, um, to the moment you, you apply. Okay, global overview. Heading costs. Heading costs are the main, main, main tabs that you found on the table, on the tables. The staff tab, the travel and subsistence tab, which are in a group A. Why? It's because obviously staff travel and eat. Mangiare e viaggiare. Um, you have then the equipment, you have uh, subcontracting, other costs, and indirect costs, the famous uh, 7%, which are in the group B, and considered the operational costs. Okay? So that's group B. And all this gives you the direct costs associated to the project. 100% of what you're going to spend is there. Okay. Um, the structural rules and uh, eligibility are um, the, uh, the, the, the indication that you have to follow by the book. You can't you can't uh, do it a uh, different uh, way. We've been talking about uh, the coherence between uh, G, G3, and the budget sheets. We've been uh, talking about the 7% maximum height for the indirect cost compared to the total budget, 10% for the equipment, 30% for the uh, subcontracting. Um, We've been reviewing so that's what I'm talking about. We've been talking about that. On the eligible costs, let's have a review of of some um, the concept first is the number of units, days, uh, the costs are su as such, such as for example rent, rent for an hour will be 50 euros, um, a number of units will be a number of day for the category, category number two staff, okay, that's the concept. You have to consider the fact that the countries have to be eligible and uh, there is a possibility to create an exception but you have to justify, you have to, to ask the permission to the um, uh, executive ag agency. Any change you want to, to do on the project, you have to, you, only ca you can only do it with the uh, authorization of the, the agency. Uh, I mention here more particularly the exceptions, ex ex exceptions in uh, Article 14, number 2 of the decision of the lifelong learning program, which is in the uh, guide, the user guide of the application, part 1 at point 1C. You remember this thing about the, 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 the countries? So, 
The, the program is open to the 27 uh, member states, the EFTA, EEA, which are uh, Iceland, uh, Liechtenstein, Norway. You have um, Turkey and Croatia independently by themselves, Switzerland. You have, oh, you have Albania? Me neither. You have uh, the overseas territories, such as I uh, mentioned the French, uh, you have Mayotte, you can do a beautiful project in Mayotte. I don't know if you know this place, etc., etc. So, see, Article 14, 2 of the decision. You be careful, for example, with some situation uh, with Kosovo, with, uh, I mean, okay, all is there. Costs are directly connected with the uh, project, we mentioned that, incurred by the consortium, reasonable, justified, they, the cost abide, obey to uh, the rules of sound finance and sound financial management. It means uh, you have to look at it, but you give value to money, okay? Um, the cost must be uh, are considered only when uh, during the lifetime of the project before it's too soon after it's too late recorded by the accountant uh, and um, it, it, the, the costs are very easy to identify and to verify okay remember yonida she said that uh, sometimes we couldn't have uh, some invoices in some country this is there's a bunch of other things. Um, I'm just trying to say something I didn't say before because then... Ah, very important. If your national taxation accounting con uh, rule in your country for something do not requi require an invoice, the bill, the gas bill. Well, there must be, you have to, 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 to manufacture a document proving that. That's the chaos of the renting cars and paying uh, tolls. Okay? Um, you're you're uh, allowed to receive uh, the VAT payment that you, you had to pay only if you can prove that you can you can recover it by the normal uh, way when i buy when i buy things here i can check the vat at the border okay i can get it refunded um, all the costs that are not eligible you will find it in this guide in page 42 let's have a look not eligible costs. Ma molto. <laughs> um, well, I think the rest we have been uh, looking at it. Okay. So uh, the rules, expenditure, budget, eligible costs, VAT, scales of units costs, indirect costs, all this you remember? Okay. Now, just to finish this uh, with a moving thing. Okay. What I mean by structural cohesion, cohesion I mean uh, all make, make sense. It's, uh, I use, I'll use uh, something that I like to use because I like bees and I'm working with bees. But things uh, are interconnected and depend on, on each other and they make sense because then at, at the end it's a solid structure. It's coherent. So, 
If you don't mind, just a second. My back sometimes gives me some goosebumps. OK. The local is the, well, the local need, the fa famous need you want to tackle, you want to address, you want to solve this situation. You check and you identify this need. You do your, your job, you're initiating, okay, you, you justify, you find numbers, uh, statistics, uh, whatever you, you, you need to prove that there is exactly this uh, situation. Then you look at the uh, European dimension and you also check if there is a, a reason for this need to be tackled, to be addressed together with other member states because it gives an added value of the solution, a European added value. Okay? It doesn't make sense to tackle something here that is completely useless in the, most of the other countries' member states. All right? So this is the process. At this point, you can link the local context with the European context. Okay? So the next step is you manage to prove the European dimension of the need that you want to address within your project. If that happened at this point, well, you've got, you've got your uh, D part of the application form, meaning you have the, you have the project this described. You have Things are, uh, you, you are capable to write the project according to all the things that you've been done. So you have the possibility to write the D1, D2, D3, D5, etc. It makes sense. There is a rational, etc., etc. Then the consortium, the background, the investigation, the aims, the objectives. You remember that? Yes. Uh, methodology, milestone, indicator, management structure, D4, European added value, D5, budget, cost effectiveness, strategy, allocation, principal. At this point, D D5 eventually uh, may be something that you are, uh, it's a working progress. You like this word, you use uh, this word very much, me too, working progress. Do you have this done? It's a working progress, okay. So you, you, so you have all this, right, at that point. All makes sense. Then you tackle the situation of uh, the uh, work plan, okay, the activities, what are you going to, to put in, in place to, so you have G1, G2, uh, and you connect that on the deliverable, on the, all the activity. And then this is linked to the budget, staff, trips, all that stuff. And you then are able to connect the G3. Do you remember what is the G3? It's the table where you put only the days of the staff per work package per partner. All right, everybody? So you see the uh, evolution of, of the works. This is a proposition. You don't have to do it, right? I mean, if you want to start with the budget, uh, I can't, but uh, some, some people manage. E4 is the, uh, the third countries. That's the, uh, we didn't uh, mention it on the uh, uh, MS Word application form, form but uh, H and I is for the third countries. Same things than the G1, G2, but for the third countries. So at that point, you have, you have a, a very structured cohesion, a very powerful, and, and you understand that what you've been doing is really solid. So you make connection between all this, and you have the last part that you can address, which is 
sustainability that we will I will uh, talk about that tomorrow and um, dissemination and uh, exploitation and all the final part this is just for you to remember work plan uh, budget G3 D5 budget means the uh, Excel tab okay that's what I mean by budget Excel tab breakdown this is more or less what I mean by uh, structural cohesion no. hmm Well, uh, reconciliation and consolidation, it's your accountant. You know, he check and he, uh, he, uh, he will uh, understand what's, what's okay, what's not. And uh, to do that, you've been breaking down the task to the dust. I mean, you projects, most of the projects fails because of the subtask of the subtask of the subtask that was not planned well enough. According to the, the dimension of the project, obviously it will be uh, very fast to see the subtasks, but uh, you have be, to be very uh, care, careful about the little things. So you, you, break down, you break down the task to the dust, you break down the, um, the resources to the dust, okay? I suggest that you have one leader for each work package and maybe not two or three leaders for the work package. I suggest. You have a leader and it's a captain, but he works with all the other partners, but he's, he's one. You, you build a very simple Excel table for yourself on the designing the budget that you understand. Sometimes you will have difficulties to understand the way it's organized on the um, uh, tab that you used on the application form for the European project, but you use your tools, okay? You take time to work with your partners on the allocation. Don't... Uh, allora, 20, okay. You're not selling uh, rugs. You're not selling uh, sardines or fish. You, 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 your partner uh, is, is a very important, uh, valuable uh, asset of your project and vice versa. You don't want him to fail. You don't want him also to have a lack of money. How many projects uh, are conflictual sometimes because um, at, in the middle of the course of the project, the part, one of the partners have a lack of money. My attitude, if, well, f first, maybe it's not good to say that, but anyway. Well, if my partner doesn't, uh, is not capable to estimate his cost, I mean, how, why should I take responsibility for that? He said, yes, I'll do that for 40,000 euros. Are you sure? Uh, yeah, okay, let's go. And then suddenly he's got a, a, a hole in his budget and he needs 20,000 more. I don't have it. It's a problem. So when it's not too much, generally uh, I find a solution depending on the relation that I have with the partner, depending with the uh, feeling that I have that really there's something we should share here. Um, we cut the, the, the apple, uh, El Pomodoro, in two. I, I just remember Pomodoro and it's round, so... The reason why I'm suggesting one partner uh, leader 
for um, the working package is because it's easier to fill in the tabs after that. You know, one partner, one work package, one row for the staff. It's not different uh, partner for the same work package. Yes, you have to. Yeah, you have to allocate budgets on work on management. For example, you don't have the choice. Dissemination, you don't have the choice. Okay. Uh, maybe um, this is. Uh, I took ten ten projects, and I look at them. And I did some statistics. This is very wrong. But some, sometimes you need to have an idea of uh, approved project, how, how were distributed the, the, uh, the budgets. It's, it's something. Don't use it. Just have an idea, oh, it was that. Because it depends on your project. OK? So. Yeah, I have numbers that I can share with you. Uh, what the numbers that I brought here today are more uh, budget linked to uh, type typology of costs. But uh, it's possible also for me to provide an idea on 10, 20 projects on, but the projects are so different, you know, it's, there are projects you have big time uh, 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 trainers and less managers, so it's, you don't have the same work packages, so it's it's more uh, it's easier to compare what you can find in all projects than what you can find in some project only. What you will find in all project are the the necessary costs you have to put in the table, such as staff. Generally, it's fifty percent. Usually, be careful with these numbers. Huh? This is just an information. This is, okay. Generally, it's like that. If you have staff, of, uh, a cost staff of seventy uh, percent, I don't know what what kind of project. Okay, is it a marathon? Just kidding. Uh, generally, twenty percent of the budget is uh, linked to the travel and subsistence. That's what I found. Good, he's not filming. Are you filming? No? Equipment. I don't have a specific number. Equipment. But you know you have a maximum of 10%. Um, subcontraction, subcontracting, 10%. But this is highly... Uh, others, generally, 5%. And... Uh, on purpose or not, but indirect costs are always close to 7%. 6.99, We wonder why. Okay, as um, to end this, uh, this uh, budgeting, work with your reality. Use invoices to justify your choices, your option, to yourself. Uh, your oh, it's under under guidance. This document, Guidance Notes, report on factual findings on the final financial reports type 1, which is um, 
provided by the Euro European Commission, but more specifically the uh, Education, Audiovisual and Cultural Executive Agency, ESEA. And also guidance notes type two. This, these two documents are very important on the situation of auditing. If you, your accountant, if your manager, if someone wants to understand a bit what's going on with this audit situation, it's there, okay? We, I guess at some point we will have to discuss how you want me, it's all in the, on the Google Drive already, so it's up to you to I have some, some ideas maybe uh, I can share with you. Okay. We have uh, half an hour now. We've been through the um, numbers today. Um, I, was, I was supposed to organize an activity this afternoon, but uh, half an hour is not enough. So I don't know if you want maybe to... You, you want to, 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 to talk about uh, some, some specific aspect? I mean, I would, this is the moment of the day, the last hour where we review what we've been uh, what we've been talking about during the day yeah you can we can start debating on something you want to to address specifically if you want say so. Tomorrow, my, my plan, in the morning, if you want, we can, uh, in the morning, I had plans to come back to a big picture of what we've been, you know, it's like jumping into the ocean and see uh, which fish bites you. Uh, and then I wanted to spend an hour on the global, global uh, policies and trends that ha are, are happening in, in Europe, the, Com the Copenhagen process, things like that. At uh, 11, there, was, uh, there is an exercise that I will, would like to, to do with you. So it's an activity. You know, the groups, Pinocchio, Gepetto, uh, El Grillo Parlante. Um, in the, activity, in the af afternoon, another activity, which is linked to uh, uh, organizing ideas with budget and, and, and work packages. And in the afternoon, the last session was, uh, is planned to be uh, a reviewing, reviewing the some specific points you want to discuss. So, if you prefer, I can um, uh, organize the debate on things that you would like to address specifically, and then we a break, we have an activity, then we continue. I will have this hour of, uh, I need this hour on uh, sustainability, impact, dissemination and exploitation that I didn't do yesterday. And then we finish with uh, another activity and, uh, I don't know, fireworks. Hello? My, my coffee was stronger than yours. 
or maybe it's the pills that I'm taking, you know. It's, uh, it's not a... Um... So, uh, how do we do that? Should, should, we, should we write here things that you would like to talk maybe more specifically tomorrow? Okay, I have a stupid question, so... <laughs> Uh, mi piace <laughs> mi piace comunque <laughs> oh, no I, I have a, a, a very stupid thing but I would um, it's definitely not stupid yeah uh, what kind of um, I, project ideas I can put in a Grundvig multilateral so for, uh, for example I, I know that uh, I can imagine a pilot training course for adult education. For adult education, what other kind of projects uh, could I mm, could I organize in a Grundvig multilateral? So that would be the question to debate tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> because I have uh, many project ideas, but I don't know if uh, it's the correct program for my ideas. So we will be brainstorming. But this brainstorming will be uh, structured because we want that to, to be organized in a way that we will understand we have two, three, four project idea. What kind of project ideas? Okay, what else? Nothing you want to discuss uh, more deeper tomorrow? Here, yeah, see? Uh, a question um, about the, um, uh, the organization, organization that can apply to this kind of... The kind of organizations? Yes. Okay. If uh, uh, is important uh, the CV of the, this organization and uh, something like this. Yeah, that's... Um, maybe I'm not allowed. I was, I, was jumping, I was jumping to the flip chart because this is my favorite topic. The third trainer of our um, laboratorio, Mr. Ceschina, uh, will talk about uh, partner research. Okay. <laughs> so, if, if we will we'll talk about it uh, tomorrow. I will spoil everything. <laughs> but but, but uh, Roberto will check with Bruno the perfect um, connection with the, this topic. Uh, whatever. whatever uh, you want me to provide, be, be sure that I'll, you know, anything, no problem. I wouldn't mind coming back also on my <laughs> own and sit there. Or sit there like you need a, you know. I like, mi piace, mi tonto. No. Another question? Another thing that you would like to, you know, to... You know, it can be something eventually that uh, is not co completely linked to what we've been doing, but would be very useful in your activity. What's the problem? It's acceptable. We've been, remember that we've been using the, the, the Grunvig multilateral project for project cycle management too. Si, Cinzia. Mea culpa. Mea culpa. How can uh, I organize uh, my project idea in work packages? Oh, yeah. Hmm? This is one uh, activity, actually, that so we can use that. Uh, some examples. <laughs> Okay, how to build the work plan according to what I would like to develop? Mm -hmm. Develop? Oh. Yes, yes. Yeah? Hi. 
It's nothing, no problem. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's dangerous because she starts with uh, you welcome and say, oh, yeah, so, oh, thank you, Gatimila, <laughs> you're welcome. And, yeah, but you say you welcome generally. Um, another idea, you guys know these four guys, the musketeers there, don't have any. <laughs> and here we have Shakespeare's. Maybe Kafka here, and there the musketeers. The microphone. How to choose uh, uh, right partners? Uh, uh, ah, it's the same. Ma, ma, please, ma, please. There's, there's, um, there's a. Uh, professional and expert that will address this particularly uh... I, I'm a problem um, um, uh, I am afraid that uh, my idea uh, can be uh, rubata eh? rubata uh, da, da, allora, vabbè, magari mi aiutate allora il, con la mia associazione stiamo cercando di conoscere comunque dei partners che possano supportare le nostre idee però il problema è che siccome non siamo non abbiamo, abbiamo un anno e mezzo quindi non ha, spesso non abbiamo i requisiti per partecipare ai bandi allora la paura la paura Chiaramente ci sono bandi di ogni tipo, cioè i multilateral sono già più corposi, magari devi pensare di partire per il tuo progetto da piccoli bandi e comunque far fare l'applicant a un partner più grande. Ed è il caso per esempio che sta seguendo Sinergia, cioè noi abbiamo un'idea progettuale, stiamo cercando di, di attuarla, abbiamo scelto un coordinatore molto più anziano però quando farai la ricerca partner non è che la butti lì l'idea, dai tutto, vai prima cioè, con una veramente bozza leggera di idea, fai una ricerca, poi eh, la vedi l'affidabilità delle organizzazioni, ma di questo parleremo a dicembre, <ride> parlerete perché io non ci Ok, something else? Oh, sure, surely you have, you have some ideas, you have something maybe you would like to bring back home, no? It's already uh, quite, uh, quite okay. I'll have to invent something. To <laughs> no, don't worry. Uh, one thing uh, I, I believe um, I would like to, which is something that, that I've prepared, is to read between the uh, headlines. What do I mean? Well, you know that uh, the European uh, Union received the Peace Nobel Prize, for example. What's behind? Why did they do that now? Why not uh, another person? Why, um, why uh, did uh, the European Commission publish um, uh, a report on English literacy in all the European country uh, last week? English levels? Things like that. And uh, I, I, uh, I have uh, three, four people, uh, co colleagues, working with me uh, in, in reading, reading information. Because um, it's, I consider that is at least 5 to 10 percent of the indicators of what um, um, the programs are. Obviously, 95% of the indicators of the topics on the topics and the aims, objectives that the programs want you to achieve are on the documentation. Strategic priorities, call, etc., etc. 
But sometimes the 10% can give you a, can give you a, 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 a complementary uh, vision of what you expect to do. Because if you manage, for example, I'll give you a very simple example. Last year, uh, you had uh, new skills for a new job uh, publication, you had uh, ET2020, I mean, different uh, kind of documentation. And at some point in all this documentation, they were, they were uh, repeating the, the, world, uh, the, the sentence, world of work, world of work, world of work. So if your project didn't uh, consider I mean, unless the project was really good, didn't consider this world of work thing, you were not in the, um, in the mainstream. And I think an hour uh, of, uh, of that is not too, too much. That's it. So, grazie mille. Again.